Welcome back to my craft room. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make this lovely trick-or-treat bag. The SVG file will be available to my Patreons to download, or you can purchase it from my Etsy shop. All the links will be in the description below. This project should take you about two and a half to three hours to do from start to finish. You will need a sewing machine with a zigzag stitch to complete this project. Once you've downloaded the file, import it into Cricut Design Space. The first thing I'm going to do is ungroup them so that I can attach each group together. I color coded them so that the gray is felt, the red is cardstock, black and white is heat transfer vinyl, and the dark gray is infusible ink transfer sheet. All of the materials and supplies I used will be listed in the description below, or you can visit my website craftwomanlock.com for more details. I purchased a yard of 3mm felt and I cut it down into two sheets as you can see here and I also cut two long strips for the handles. For the cardstock I used manila pattern paper but you can use any paper you'd like. This is just going to be a template for replacing the HTV and the infusible ink transfer sheets. Here are the measurements I used to cut my materials down to prepare them for the cutting mat. Once all the materials are prepped you can get started on cutting. I started on cutting the felt. I used the felt setting and changed the pressure to more and changed the tool to a rotary blade. When cutting the felt, I did two passes without taking it out of the machine. The ears and wings are up next using the infusible ink transfer sheet. Use the default setting and don't forget to change out the blade before cutting. Next up are the ears and mouth using the default iron on setting. The fangs are up next, and I'm just going to be using the same setting as before, iron on. The last and final mat to cut will be the cardstock. I use a medium cardstock setting. Also, just a note, you don't need all of these pieces. For instance, the eyes and ears and the wings can be mirrored, so you can cut one of each. If you guys have any questions or comments regarding any of the steps that I'm going to be showing you, leave them in the comment below and I'll try to help you the best that I can. Here are all the pieces cut and ready for fusing. Before I get started, I wanted to show you what the swatch for the HTV and the infusible ink transfer sheet looks like. I liked how the infusible ink looked matted so I decided to use that for the ears and wings. However, this is a personal choice. If you'd like, you can use all HTV or all infusible ink. It's up to you. In the future, I would like to try to use glow in the dark HTV and see how that turns out. I'm going to fast forward through all of my weeding. I did use a Cricut weeding hook. However, you can use a pin or anything with a point to remove all the excess material. I would be a little bit more careful removing the excess material from the infusible ink transfer sheets. I did find fingerprints on my sheet. I don't think it affected the transfer of the design though. For the wings, I lined up the cardstock to the design and used washi tape to hold it down. Here I am heating up the felt first before I line up the design. And I did use pins to hold the design down before I got the iron on, and this is optional. I'm also using a regular iron with no steam. I would suggest using a heat press. It took a few tries to get it just right, so I would follow the instructions on the box. The ears are the same as the wings. I'm just going to show you how I placed it, and the ironing will be the same as before. To layer the HTV, line up the mouth to the cardstock, place it on the felt, and then iron. Once the plastic is cool to the touch, remove it, and then line up the fangs, iron it, and you're done. Here's what it should look like when all the pieces are ironed. Now you're ready to start sewing. To prep the bottom, fold the circle in half and place two pins on the fold. Then fold it again, lining up the pins, and place another set of pins on the fold. Then place another pin between each pin. You should have eight pins in total. Let's start by attaching the panels. You should have five back panels with a straight and curved side. 
attach the curved side to the circle. Each panel gets attached between each pin, as you see here. Butt the two pieces together and join with a zigzag stitch. Then finish by attaching the three front panel pieces. When you get to the end, you'll want to overlap the stitches by about an inch. Here comes the hard part, sewing the panels together. I started by sewing the back five panels together, then the front three panels together. When I got to the front panels, after you sew the center panel, match the panel with the ears and the eyes and place a pin where the center panel ended so that when you sew the center panel to the other side, they look symmetrical. To join the front and the back panel, line up the wing to the front panel. The wing should line up to the bottom of the ear and you should place two pins, one on the top and one on the bottom. Then match the back panel to the front and place the two pins on the back panel. You'll also want to place an additional pin on the front panel where the back panel ends. When you sew these two panels together, leave the opening to attach the wing later on. I matched up the panel on the other side and placed the pin in the same place so that my bag will be symmetrical. So here's what your bag should look like and these are the openings for the wings. We're going to go ahead and attach the wings by pushing the wing through the slot opening and matching up the cut edges of the back, front and wing. And with a needle and thread you're going to want to do a quick whip stitch and keep the stitches close to the cut edge as possible. This will be reinforced with glue later on. After I knot the ends, I'd like to hide the tail end in the seam before I cut it. When you're done attaching the wings to both sides, reinforce by adding glue to the inside of the bag. I'm using E6000, which didn't work that well. I ended up going back and using hot glue instead. For the handles, I cut two 15 inch strips, leaving about an inch on either end to attach to the bag. The length can be changed depending on how long you'd like the handles to be. My daughter is a few months shy of being two years, so the handles really didn't need to be that long to begin with. So once you finish gluing the handles to the bag, uh, you are done. So this concludes this tutorial for creating this trick or treat bag. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, subscribe to my channel to get notifications later on. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below and I'll try to help you the best I can. Till next time, bye!